Welcome back to Workshop Friend. I've been working on my mini lathe project and I've come to the stage where I need to do some boring on a couple of very small tooth pulleys. And uh, I have a number of boring tools, but none which are small enough to, to open up these six millimeter holes. For a number of years, I've been using this Eclipse boring tool holder and uh, that works very well. I've had to thin this down to fit into the rather narrow slot in the tool post, but I've uh, been able to continue to use it on my MyFood lathes. And I can um, also use it with uh, repurposed taps. I have a number of uh, taps which have either broken or just simply worn out. And so I repurpose them uh, to make small boring tools. And that also works quite well. However, with these very small holes, um, this one's six millimeter, I need to open it up. Um, I need to use smaller taps. The smaller taps don't really fit in here very well. I could use longer screws, but even if I do that, the center height's not right. So I've taken some measurements from the lay, the center height in relation to the tool post, the gap in here, and uh, the size of my taps, which are available to repurpose and I've come up with a little drawing which we can use to make a dedicated tool holder for this. You can see here that the tool holder is based on a piece of three quarter by half inch bright mild steel by three and three quarter inches long with a 730 second hole for the shank of the tap. That's roughly 5.5 millimeters. And I've included two set screws off to one side and one on top. So this marking out will be helpful when I take the work over to the shaping machine. Just setting the workpiece parallel to the table. So what I'm going to try and do here is cut a slot at this point here so that when I rotate the work through 90 degrees, I can cut lengthwise and uh, that's much more efficient on a shaping machine. Uh, the alternative is to take small cuts all the way along here, but uh, that's uh, quite inefficient. So I feel this might be better. We'll see how it goes. Well, unfortunately, I broke that um, first parting tool. It wasn't very deep. I put a more robust one in and I'm um, coming down to depth now. And I will just clean up to the final edge here and then we can turn the work around. In this close up view, you can see me facing the shoulder to length. On the return stroke, the tool appears to jump vertically. It's in fact the clapper box opening and allowing the tool to move forward and lift at the same time. Let me explain why the slot is required. I found that in practice, on my small shaping machine, the ram must take the tool beyond the length of cut. This ensures that the ram and its mechanism are not under load when the direction of cut reverses. If you try to reverse the direction of tool travel without fully traversing the work, two problems arise. The first is that the mechanism is heavily loaded as the tool comes to a complete stop and reverses direction. On my machine, you can hear a knocking noise, which clearly isn't healthy. Secondly, the end of the cut is not definite. In other words, you will not generate a neat shoulder, but rather a rough edge as the chip fails to separate properly. It is now time to mark out the tool shank height. This is determined by the slot width in the tool holder 
allowing for packing to adjust the tool height. I need to remove some material from this end underneath because being bright mild steel, the, when the internal stresses were released and I cut quite a lot from the other side, it bowed. So the result of that is that this is high. So what I'm going to do now is I've just uh, set this up in the vise and uh, raised this up by the amount that it's um, out of true. So that's eighth hour higher than that. We'll take a cut across the face here and then that should uh, give us um, parallel section between this and the top surface. As a result of the heavy cuts taken on the other side, internal stresses have been relieved. This interrupted cut shows the degree to which the work has bowed as a result of this. Video number one in this series gives more details on the topic of distortion when machining cold rolled steel. So again, we need to cut a slot before rotating the vise 90 degrees so that we can have the nice longitudinal cuts. This surface here will be the upper surface of the tool holder as it goes into the tool post. So having cut the slot again, I've rotated the vice 90 degrees so we can cut longitudinally and uh, of course now I've adjusted the stroke to suit the longer length of work but also I need to make sure that the stroke ends in the slot so I'm very carefully lining that up and making sure that I don't go beyond the slot uh, but I do come into the slot so that's about right so that's set up so I can lock that and now we can start to cut Now I'm carefully marking out the position of the hole for the tool and following that I'll mark out positions of the holes for the three set screws. So I've centre popped the hole on the end here, that's the hole for the tool. If I find that I'm not on the crosshairs, as it were, then I angle the center punch and just uh, correct. And usually you can get it bang on. 
I think this one is going to come slightly to the right. So we'll just make it a slight adjustment there. I think we've got it now. So I can just tighten the setting. That increases the spring pressure and the impulse. It gives a bigger indentation. Again, I just check where we are. Yep. Okay, and the last one is on the top. Yeah, that's slightly to the left, isn't it? Let's see if we can move that. Yep, I think we've picked that up. Okay, over to the drill now. I'll start by drilling this hole. First of all, I attach this cap clamp, which gave me access to the um, this side of the workpiece to get it square. I've got it mounted on an angle plate. And uh, what I'm going to do now is, with a very fine drill, pick up the, the hole for the tool. And uh, we're going to open that out carefully. I'm carefully nudging the work into position so that the fine drill doesn't deflect as it picks up the center punched hole. And then I lock everything down. Okay, that's enough. We've got it started, so we can now open up to uh, larger drills. I'm using my best number drills to carefully open up to the final size. I'm just going to put a clearance drill in uh, so that I don't have to tap all the way through. This is about 10 millimeters and the length of the set screw is 6 millimeters so I'm going to take 4 millimeters out the top there. It would be tempting to go all the way through with the taper tap, but um, I like to use, as far as possible, all three of my taps, the taper, the second and the plug, so that um, I get uh, more equal wear on them. I've just used the taper and the plug in this case because it's a very short hole. It takes a little bit longer, but I think it makes the set of taps last a little bit longer. That's the top hole. Now I've just got to finish off the the two side holes. Of course they were just started in the machine before and of course they also have these uh, clearance holes which provide some guidance as well for the tap. So uh, we can be sure that these are going to be true.
I'm cleaning off the layout blue with some methylated spirits and then we can try the tool and see how the assembly looks. Here you can see the repurposed worn out tap with the appropriate cutting edges at the end. Behind the working portion, the tool is slightly wasted to provide plenty of clearance with the work. You can see rake angles providing clearance for internal facing and on the other edge clearance with the surface of the bore. You can see it fits into the holder quite nicely. There are a couple of set screws on the front there. They provide the main clamping force and there's an additional one on top to make sure the tool is firmly seated in the downward direction, which of course is the direction of cutting. I think there are still quite a few folk who, like me, don't have a quick change tool post. Uh, I think uh, if you get yourself organized and have suitable packing, then uh, you know you can get by. So um, I use this height gauge here, and I've just set this up slightly above center height since I'm boring a small hole. And um, that's one way to make sure that you've got adequate clearance, front clearance. Of course, if you're just slightly below center line or on center line, it makes that front clearance in a hole a little bit difficult because of the curvature. But um, let's just see if this tool passes through cleanly. It does. Now this pulley is part of my mini lathe series and uh, this needs this is the pulley that goes on the motor and it needs to be opened out from this six millimeter to an eight millimeter hole and uh, when i start the lathe you'll see there's a little bit of run out there um, but that run out is actually just the uh, end plate here um, it's not it's not the pulley itself the the bore has run out there um, but uh, the i've clocked up the outside of the pulley and uh, that's true so that's a little bit uh, concerning anyhow I'm, I'm confident that uh, the perimeter of the pulley is true so we're going to go ahead and bore in this setting I'm not going to finish this off today I just want to um, prove that the cutting tool works fine and uh, the actual operations on the pulley will be the subject of my mini lathe series Well, that's completed that little project. Uh, next video, we'll be returning to the mini lathe series and we'll be getting on with the boring out the pulleys and uh, mounting the motor on the counter shaft. So uh, thanks for joining me. If you've appreciated the video, do give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Thanks for joining me.